Five ways to get better at octaves. There's a lot of debate about whether or not this octave grip is a legitimate technique or not. Once you start practicing the transitioning more and more often, you find that it becomes more relaxed. Whether it's something as simple as rain dance, they all have double vertical octaves. Good morning ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another episode of The Studio, my name is Adam. It's time for the first one of the year, it is... Thank you so much to my studio VIPs, Robert Utomo, Bradley Crowley, Sunshine Han, Greg Harris, Dom Dominic Chung, Dean P. Newberger, and Scott Raider. Thank you so much for your continued support. And today's featured studio artist is Min Lee. Thank you so much for your continued support. And if you'd like to become a studio VIP or a studio artist, you can go to patreon.com forward slash amtan or you can click over here. Welcome back to the show once again. And yes, welcome back to the first technique talk for 2020. Don't worry, I am going to update that intro at some point, but today, we're gonna talk about octaves. There are three techniques in four mallet marimba that I think are super, super difficult, even for me today. The first one is probably triple laterals. Second one will be the extension of the triple laterals, which is of course the one-handed roll. And the third concept, which is the topic of today's video is of course, double vertical octaves. And the thing is, as long as four mallet marimba repertoire has existed, there have been perfect octaves in droves. <laughs> like every piece you play, whether it's from DCI, whether it's a virtuosic marimba solo, like Khan Variations, whether it's something as simple as Rain Dance, they all have double vertical octaves. Why are double vertical octaves so popular in solo marimba repertoire? Why do we see them everywhere? Well, when you think about it, double vertical octaves are the most powerful, most sonorous, and most visually appealing technique that can be performed with just one hand on the marimba. In the last four years, I've tried to refine my octaves so that they become more efficient, more powerful, and they look better. And while it's not on the same level as some people, It's still something that I take seriously. So in today's technique talk, I'm gonna talk about five ways to get better at octaves. Now, of course, the technique talk disclaimer, I'm not necessarily a professional. I'm not necessarily on the same level as a university professor or someone like, I don't know, Lee Howard Stevens. So if you want professional advice, make sure you read those books first, like Method of Movement, Idiokinetics et al. Those are all the really professional resources, but this is more just me sharing my thoughts about octaves because I love them. Tip number one, avoid using the octave grip. Now this tip is definitely more to do with Steven's grip. And there's a lot of debate about whether or not this octave grip is a legitimate technique or not. But basically what it is, is on Steven's grip, normally you put your thumb on the outside of the inside mallet, if that makes sense. But what the octave grip is, is basically a hybrid of traditional grip and burden grip. And it's basically putting your thumb on the inside of the mallet and using that thumb to push the inside mallet outwards so that it becomes wider. Now, as you might remember last year, I watched a marimba head cam of a DCI player from SCV. I think his name was Tyler and he was playing the most outrageous marimba solos, but he also used, I did notice in that opening shot, he was cheating a little bit with the thumb on his grip. It does look like Stevens, but he's sticking the thumb out a little bit to get that octave this octave grip. Now for that example specifically, because Tyler was playing a whole bunch of octaves non-stop and it had to be at maximum volume, I believe putting it into this locked octave grip is not such a bad thing. But for everyone else, especially in the concert world where a lot of repertoire switches quickly between octaves to smaller intervals and you go from double verticals to laterals, this grip is not good. <laughs> Firstly, by holding your mallets like this and doing repeated strokes with it, you are putting a lot of stress on the side of your thumb. Now, this is a very small muscle. It's not designed to take that much strain. Whereas if you're holding the mallets in the standard way and having your thumbs on the mallet or outside of the mallet, then the pressure is distributed a lot more evenly and you can play for longer without injuring yourself. The second reason why this is a bad habit is because it makes it very difficult to switch between this octave grip and to basically any other technique. <laughs> the 
Like if you want to play a lateral, for example, you can't play a lateral very well because your thumb is not controlling the inside mallet. So it kind of just floats around like this. If you want to switch to any other interval and you need to roll the inside mallet, you have to first put your thumb on the outside of the mallet and then you can switch it. That's two steps, ready? Watch this again. So the inside thumb goes outside and then you have to switch it which makes the whole idea of moving intervals a two-step process. Totally unnecessary. Whereas if your thumb is on the mallet and in control of the inside mallet as it's supposed to be, you can move to the smaller interval literally just like that. It's just literally one step and it's done. So much faster and I get it, you know, people say, oh, putting your thumb there is not a big deal. It's a very small move, but it's still a delay. a delay. It's a lot of effort and it could be limiting your maximum potential. Like you could be playing so much faster and so much more efficiently, but you have to keep doing this thumb war thing. <laughs> so yes, while using this octave grip may be easier in the short term, it's going to be much harder in the long term. So don't do it. Tip number two is to build up your octaves gradually. Now actually the hardest thing about playing octaves is not holding the mallets in the octave position because let's face it, anybody can put the mallets in the octave position. Even someone who doesn't know how to play marimba could put the mallets in the octave position after a certain amount of time and have it ready to go. What makes the octave position difficult is transitioning into that position and transitioning out of that position. Just like before with the thumb thing, it's really important that you start off by transitioning from easier intervals into the octave and back into those easier intervals. Let me show you. So for example, start off with a really comfortable interval. For most people, this will be something like a fifth and then slowly extend it to a sixth and then extend it to a seventh, extend it to an octave and then back to the seventh, back to the sixth and back to the fifth. And get used to this feeling of slowly edging it one, bar at a time. Once you get really good at that, you can start practicing jumping from intervals. So start jumping from an octave to a sixth, and then an octave to a fifth. And do it really, really slowly at the start. Like take as much time as you need to do it because there's no point in rushing these things. And once you can do that, try and do really big jumps. Like try transitioning from an octave to a second. This idea of gradually transitioning is a technique used in a lot of marimba repertoire. There are many times where you need to switch between different intervals at different times because let's face it, octave grip, especially when you're first holding it, is not very nice. It's very, very tight and very uncomfortable. Once you start practicing the transitioning more and more often, you find that it becomes more relaxed. I find that now when I hold my mallets in the octave position, I'm not really holding it that tight at all. Like you could literally just take it out of my hands. <laughs> Slow and steady wins the race. Tip number three, practice your single stroke roll. Once you've gotten good at holding the octave and transitioning into the octave, the next thing you need to work on is of course getting power out of the octave. And the best way to get power when you're first starting out of octaves is from the wrist. Look at the, look at that wrist. <laughs> and the easiest way to do that is to literally get your sticks or your mallets and practice your single stroke roll because that is the foundation of all percussion techniques. Something that a lot of people don't try is removing the two inside mallets of four mallet grip and using these as your single stroke roll because this is a very unusual way of playing the single stroke roll and it relies more on the wrist which gets you very used to that feeling that you're going to need for when you put them into octave position. And once you're able to do that, you'll literally be able to point to any octave you see and go BOW! Tip number four, make it easier for yourself. This is something I talk about a lot in all of my other Technique Talk videos. There are times where you can flex and there are times where it's a no flex zone. <laughs> okay, picture this. So you're going to the gym for the very first time and you want to use the weights and you see the weights and you pick up the heaviest weight you see on display because your logic is, well, I can't physically lift this weight, but if I lift this one, my muscles will get bigger a lot faster. Nope. This is the same logic as people who always say that you should use heavy mallets when practicing new techniques. Why? So don't be afraid to use less complex, lighter mallets for when you're just practicing technique because the last thing you need is more barriers getting into your way that are totally unnecessary. Use something light, use something 50-50, something that gives you a predictable sound. Don't use fancy multi-tone mallets. And then the second thing that you can do to make it easier for yourself is of course use mallet tape. 
Contrary to what a lot of people say on Facebook groups, using mallet tape is actually really good for this kind of stuff because it gives you an extra bit of confidence, it protects the shafts, it absorbs the sweat, and you know, using octave position means you have to grip the mallets a little bit tighter, and that tighter grip can be really fatiguing over long periods of time. So using tape helps absorb the shock, helps make it a lot easier, and there's no shame in using it. Seriously, like so many people use it, whether it's people like students, whether it's people like university professors, whether it's people like true concert artist professionals, everyone uses mallet tape. Yes, simple things like that can make the experience easier for yourself. Which leads me to tip number five, the most important tip of all, practice consistently. Don't expect your octaves to get good overnight. Just like any other percussion technique, you have to give it some time, you have to let the muscles develop. It's a slow process, but it can be a little bit more efficient and a little bit easier if you follow all of the ideas that I've given you. Even if you don't have a marimba, it might be good to just hold the mallets in your hand and just constantly rotate them and move them around like this and just get your hands to feel really loose. And that way when you get back to the instrument, you save a lot of time. But yeah, now I really like octaves. I use them a lot and I hope these five tips will help you too. And if you enjoyed today's video, please give me a thumbs up. I'd really appreciate it so much. And I'd love to hear from you as well. Let me know down in the comments below. Are there any other difficult marimba techniques that you struggle with? Are there any other exercises that you do to improve octaves? Let me know because I'd love to hear from you. And finally, as always, if you haven't already, please hit that red subscribe button below to keep up with my uploads and hit that notification bell icon to be informed of brand new uploads every single time. But yes, I hope you've had a great 2020. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys next week for another episode of the studio. Good night. I finally stopped running now. With you, I found my peace somehow. Let go of every thought that was holding me back. Yeah. I'm in love with you in every way. The joy you give me every day.